And hey, look at that. It's Monday. Hey, we're in February 2021. Just keeps on going. We're into episode two, uh, I believe, or season two, however you want to look at it, 2021. Uh, and we're going to get into, ooh, we get fun stories today. We're actually going to get to a story of God's making bad choices. And not just like a teaser story, like an actual story story. Uh, we'll do reminding things. We're going to talk about that. Wednesday is when we get to our first big, big story uh, of like eating babies and fun stuff like that. Yay. Today, it does involve poor choices and bad things happening, but it's a little bit of a shorter story. So we still have to do a bit more learning. Wednesday is like nonstop stories, which is technically learning. It's just not going to feel like learning. It's going to feel like me just telling you stories about random people who did bad things. It's just technically it qualifies as learning. That's the joy of Greek mythology. Grades and B points are updated for those of you who are interested. My home children, whenever you show up, you can check over there too if you want to. Blah, 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 blah. Then for the quizzy thing from last week, hang on one second. Do I have anyone in here I have to harass? No skipping class. No skipping class. Nope, you're all good. The only two kids who I have who have missing work also don't come to class. So that makes that one fairly easy. Uh, so I think we're good to go on that one and so that one. So oh, with the quiz, I'm going to do the speedy review of it real quick. Uh, one of the things that seemed to be a surprise for people when they took the quiz, my quizzes are not going to just come from the information on the screen because I've realized apparently some kids on Zoom don't pay attention when I talk and just sit there and pay attention to the screen, but ignore all the talky bits. So I came up with a fun plan where instead I now put things on the screen that are going to be different from what I say out loud, like the Hades part, where Hades had to be in two different things. So Hades was both a god and a place, but on the screen it just said god to see which kids actually paid attention to me when I did the talky talky bits. Oh, hang on. Evelyn's alive. Welcome, Evelyn. So that'll be the same thing moving forward, making sure that you guys do the whole paying attention and not just reading off the screen. Emily, you showed up late, which means I have to see your face to make sure that you're alive. If not, we're going to boot you out and beginning operations. Well, don't do that yet because I'm going to be booting you out then. And then getting ready and done. Removed. Boop. There we go. And back to here. So let me run through this with you real quick. And so, what is the correct spelling of this God's name? Any spelling is correct. So, if you looked on the handout or the screen versus posters, they're all spelled in different ways. So, any spelling can be correct. Um, also, percentage-wise, I think it was up there. You guys said 81% of that was correct, which surprised me, but apparently, ah, paying attention. Uh, oh, what God was considered the swirling ball of nothingness? Chaos. Uh, and we're going to get to that official story on Wednesday with chaos. I tried to put all the different spellings on there. If you think you got it right, but you spelled it wrong, just send me an email and I can go back in there and check it for you. But I've tried to cover every possible spelling of it I could. Um, you guys did better on that one. And then, uh, which God is both a God and a place and became a river? It is correct. Sticks. I had a lot of kids who tried to put Gia on there because they just looked at her and then God and place, and they just went off of that one. But sticks, if you didn't read the part in blue, actually turned into a river. Uh, that was probably a slightly, and I put multiple spellings on there. So I tried to do S-T-I-C-K-S and S-T-I-X and S-T-Y-X. I tried to anticipate whatever questions you guys are spelling you guys would do. Uh, the first two gods to be a power couple in Greek mythology uh, is correct. So Uranus and Gia were the two there. Apparently, that's the one you guys did well on. So apparently, as soon as I said giggling, you guys were like, Uranus and Gia. And I was like, you guys got that one correct. So a little proud of you on that one and ashamed at the same time. And then ooh, what did the god Nike have that almost no other god had? Yeah, so in class, every time I ask this question, half the kids would shout out things like shoes or a company. So I stole those answers and put them on there because that's what kids kept yelling out loud in class because I was convinced kids were going to get this one wrong. Nope. This one, we had 100% of the kids get right, which I was shocked because when we went over it in class, it's like the one that most kids got wrong. But again, I've now realized that the more I try to understand kids, the less I do. Uh, and why is it ironic that the word jovial comes from Zeus? Yeah, that's what I 
Natasha makes it ironic because we are going to get to a story of Zeus and his happiness and his right. friendliness today, and with Hera and her not so friendliness. That one probably you can, apparently making fun of gods and happiness. That one you guys got correct also. Um, ooh, and where does Hades go? Um, there you go. The one that I said in class. And so that one apparently we struggled a bit more because this is where I found out that. Now, how did they not pay attention off this one? Did you guys got the whole Nike thing? I have no idea. Because that was not on the screen at all. That was like straight from me talking about things. And then what God is holding in the trident? Um, uh, it is correct. By the way, the number one wrong answer on this one, trident. The number of kids I had put the answer is trident on there. Mr. Roby, that's right there in the question. Oh, I'm aware that I had kids who put trident and multiple kids who then emailed me. I got number eight correct. Why did you count it wrong? And they had trident on there. I'm like, I don't think you read the question. Um, but that was down to 81% because so many kids put down trident for the answer. And again, I tried to predict all the different spellings of Poseidon. But if you thought you put Poseidon and got it wrong, let me know. Now, if you spell Poseidon, T-R-I-D-E-N-T, you know, you're out of luck. Because I'm sure some kids are like, yeah, I just spelled it with a T and a rident. Right, that is not how it's rolling. All right, back to our myth page. Blah, blah, you can find it. Blah, blah, poster, blah, blah. Uh, home children. I, oh, sorry, Max. Uh, we will be talking about these posters here again in a moment. What's up, Max? I apologize. So I spelled Poseidon wrong. And it was it. I didn't spell trident, but I think I got like one letter wrong. And I don't know if you marked it right or wrong. What did you mark that? I don't know. If it's not memorized. Send me an email. You send me an email. I can go check it for you. Well, I, I'm it. sorry. I didn't know I was supposed to do that. So I'm sorry. I forgive you. It's okay. You're human. Yeah. Just send it to me. It's all good. Could be a robot. And then Olympian posters. All right. So now we're going to do a, a quick rewindy bit, the thing we already did, just to beat it into you, and then we get to our fun news story stuff. There's a chance some kids might not have things written down on theirs. We're just trying to low-key help them out. They can be like, I lost it, and they're now starting over again. So let's help those kids, because here's where your writing utensil comes in as we finish out the rest of it. Where do we get jovial from? Is wow, such strange. Uh, be, because what was his Roman name that connects to it? Joe. That's correct. Not Joe. That's Mr. and Mrs. Mama's kid. But Jova, J-O-V-E. And what does jovial mean? Happy. Wow, you guys said it so happily also. Much better than my first period. Who I had to teach them irony again. They were like, happy. <laughs> now, of course, when we get down to fatal, what does fatal mean? Yes. So, by the way, first period, who I enjoy making fun of because they don't talk to me. When we got to jovial, their answer was happy. We got to fatal, their answer was death, and they got excited. And I'm like, well, that explains a lot about you guys, that happiness makes you depressed and death brings you joy. I'm like, now I understand why we have issues. So Zeus, we get to our jovial and the happy things. We are going to get to our story of him and his happiness today. Cereal comes from what, God? Demeter. And what is Demeter's Roman name? Ceres. Yes, correct. Ceres, C-E-R-E-S, uh, who's, again, girl over there in brown, throwing the gang signs and the same one over <laughs> yonder with fewer gang signs. And so that would be her. And she was the god of grains and harvest and growing, sort of like Mother Nature. Because what, what type of food is cereal? Grain. As opposed to what you guys have for cereal, which is made from... <laughs> Way to embrace your sugar in the morning. It, <laughs> way to double down on your sugar. That doesn't even pretend to be syrup. No, I, I break it into a bowl and put milk on it. They, they could be. They're definitely not cereal. Uh, unless you're a very confused child. Okay. Then, oh my God, the shredded mini wheats. Yeah, well, usually they're frosted shredded mini wheats. Yeah. But that's closer. I'll give you that one. They are, it's right there in the name, right? Sugar weenie bits, it's right there in the No, but they put all those things. Yeah, it's got peanut butter, and peanut butter is a kind of, yeah, no, that's pretty much sugar again. Volcano goes into, or what god does it come from? Hermes. Oh, no, hold on a second. Hepatophysis. 
Sorry. Max asked a question and then dipped. Come back, Max. Welcome back, Max. We missed you so much. Ah. It's fun listening to you guys pronounce Greek names. Uh, again, Hephaestus, not hepatitis, uh, the, the god of diseases. Uh, just like the next one over there is Hermes, not Herpes, the other god of diseases. And Hephaestus, guy over here in orange, well, not, I guess that one, he's in the pink and the reds and the yellows. And then over there, ooh, Hephaestus, one of the only gods to be what? Is correct, which is why he has the uh, thing under his arm right there. He was also incredibly ugly, but we'll get to that story coming up too. And they're related. He became crippled partly because of the ugliness. You know, that's what happens to the poor, ugly people out there. Uh, same reason why he's sitting down over there. Uh, the thing that he was working on, because he's the god of the smiths and the fire and the working and stuff like that. Again, not a toilet. Oh, by the way. My first period, who's one who told me they thought it was a toilet. When I brought that up again today, I let them know I made fun of them all last week. I had a kid go like, I don't know what you're talking about. We never said it. And the other guy was like, that was you that said it. And he was like, oh. Uh, so that brings us to, oh, where does, where did Hephaestus make his forge? Not in a volcano. In a mountain. But then as he would work in the mountain and it built up heat and eventually exploded, the mountain became a fire. There you go. And became the volcano. And so, yeah, they thought it was a mountain. Everyone thinks it's a mountain until it explodes. And you're like, I chose partly for my house. And then it becomes a volcano. Uh, Mark Hurriel comes from what, God? Hermes. And, good job pronouncing it correctly. And uh, uh, what's his Roman name? <laughs> At least you were confident, Mina. That's the first Mercury thing. is correct. So his Roman name was Mercury, same thing as the the planet, which was named after him too. Uh, probably a good idea, Owen. Uh, and so he was speedy god. What was his job in Greek mythology? The there you go. Also a post person or post man, messenger, UPS. Uh, the thing that he holds in his hand called. Caduceus. What does the caduceus look like? The, it looks like a snake thing. Stick and? Oh, it looks like a snake. Snakes and? Wings. There you go. That's like a doosie. And then on that one, what is it thought that it could do? Raise people from the dead. There you go. So it was a healy thing. And then, by the way, as a kid pointed out earlier on that one, it does look like someone's project, like a kid did, like eighth grade for like social studies, like they were doing Greek mythology and they had like build it themselves. And I was like, oh, that's kind of adorable. Especially with like a little eye on the front being offset to one side. Like the little snakes. I thought it was adorable. Less than my daughter would make. Anyway, so where do we recognize these things today? Yeah. Works for me. Those <laughs> medically places. And then same thing with single stick and snake. Yeah, Once yeah, again, right here, right here. Right? Oh yeah, I forgot. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually my daughter's jacket. And so I watch this over there for kids at home too. And so my brother used to work at a hospital and so he gave them this thing. And so I forgot the fact that she actually wears this jacket all the time. It's just kind of the same thing on the back. From a hospital in Denver that I used to work at. Good I used job, to live in Denver. Yeah. My brother used to live there too. And then we have the healing of the stick. And then the opposite of healing is fatal, which comes from the fates. Right. Good job pronouncing them, not as the fussies. How many fates are there? Three. Three. What does the first sister do? Uh, oh, he ring. Oh. Say he syringe? Did. No, the, the string. String, which is like a syringe, but different. I apologize. <laughs> and she creates that has the giant string of life. What does second sister do? Decide when to cut it. No. Decide when to cut it. When they oh, die. Oh, decide how it's going to die. Maybe it's it's not one gonna die. Need more tape again. Who's gonna die? Tape. Who is going to die? Oh, how long are you gonna live? Using the stick. So that's why she is the second one has the stick, which decides how long you're going to live. I have electrical tape that might work. Yes. 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 And more yes. I'm going to have you sit here 
should you want to steal it, but you're welcome to sit there and we'll try that. You seem excited about why. Then we have first one with a string, second one with a stick, third one has that's where the scissors come in that you seemed all excited about. And so they would measure how long each person was going. Ooh. When they cut the string, what happened to the person? Oh, they, they die. They, 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 they have like a limit. When they get bored. That's when they're born. So the difference is the string cutting was not what kills you. The string cutting is what brought you to life. So a string cut and then fizzled, and then that's what brought you in. So if you have an accident that is fatal, what happens to you? Die. And that's where the dying comes in. Yes. I thought you said Jeff. And I'm like, what's wrong with Jeff? And you're like, I'm like, die, like, Jeff. And I'm like, yes, apparently we're going to kill Jeff. That poor guy. He was never going to see it coming. Um, or death, which just rhymes with poor Jeff. I know. It's close enough. <laughs> we're just killing so many people. And then we got to Iris. What god does Iris come from? Iris. Nicely done. Rainbow god, god of colors and pretty things. And we're going to find out she works with Hermes, but for a different god. And we're going to find out partly why with our fun story today. And what are our two definitions of Iris? The color of your eye and the flower. It's correct. Color of eye and flowery thing. It's almost like Billy was paying attention or something weird like that. Uh, and there's our flowery thing and eyeball thing. What's this part called? Pupil. This part is the iris. And then this part is the eyeball. So if you guys are dissecting those in science right now, have you not had to learn the name of the square? We have. I had to We just did it. Okay. So then. It's kind of creepy, but I guess it's Sabbath. So now I can ask that in my other classes. In theory, you should be able to answer that we know now it's the sclera because you guys have technically gotten to cut one open. We did. Right. 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 Sure. Is it? Wait, is yeah, it? That's is that six the eyeball only for a bit? No. Apparently, no. You're Ramses not trying to dance. dance. I know. I didn't do it yet, so I thought it might be only for Apparently, no. Graham says no enthusiastically. I'm not smart enough to. No, very honest. Mm -hmm. And where do we get music in museum from? We haven't done that. We've not. So, this is our next one then. Now to our new stuff. So, we're going to get to music in museum, he says, trying to buy kids a moment to be smart enough to figure it out. Not smart enough for advanced science, just smart enough to figure out where we're going to get this word from. He says, Low key, throwing no, shade. No, 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 no. I don't know. Me neither. Wait, not that that side. There, you, yes. Mars. No, yes. Mars. Mars. Why do you say Mars? Because both are Ooh, no, what a good guess. Where is it? Athena. Because soap, what? Apollo. Why Apollo? Oh, you are on the right track. It's oh. in yes. And Apollo, we're going to get music and museum come from nine gods who work for Apollo, but they don't actually connect to Apollo. Yeah, you got to go the other side. Yeah, those are the Hecatonic shirts. We're going to get to them. Yes, that would be making it much easier on you. And then home children, you're also failing me. Because here I thought maybe a home child would be the smart kid, but apparently not so much there either. He says, throwing shade at people. I think I know. Uh-oh. Um, Why do you say muses? Um, art. Because it sounds like music. Yeah. It does. It, does. it does have the word art in it. And music and, is art. And, <laughs> <laughs> That's what they always tell. I'm right. You are. <laughs> you are still trying to fight for it. And all of a sudden, you're like, yeah, I'm done. So, yes, you are correct. So music and museum are going to come from the muses. There were nine of them. Numbers are hard. Nine of them. And in mythology, uh, these nine girls were in control of all of the arts. They worked for Apollo. So the way the Greeks believed it was they thought that humans had no natural artistic ability at all. We're going to get to a story coming up that humans are essentially made out of clay that was animated like little Pinocchios. Like they sprinkled magic dust on us, like we came to life and like danced around and stuff like that. 
So because of that, humans by themselves do not have the ability to do any kind of art. There you go. Wow. And so, yes. Um, Jerry L., I'm getting ready to boot you out because when you come in late and your camera's not on, I just go ahead and remove you. So, hey, you're alive now. Okay. Then, so here's what the Greeks believe. Let's say Salia decides that she is going to become an artist. She's like, today is my day. So the Greeks believe that no matter how much Salia wants it, she will not be able to have any kind of artistic ability. You give her a paintbrush, she would just be like, smacky, 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 art. Misha Borbiak, I've seen people do art. It's incredible. You have, but you've not seen a human do it. What you've seen is a muse do it. The Greeks believed that the muses sort of worked like ghosts, and they would possess your body in order to do these great artistic things. So when so Leo wants to become great at art, she would pray to the muses. And the nine of them, they worked in different areas. There was a muse of dance, of theater, of speaking, of drawing, of clay. And so you would pray whichever one controlled your area. So, so Leah would pray to the muse of artistic things. And if the muse answered her prayers, it would possess her like a ghost in Ghostbusters. She would pick up the paintbrush, and all of a sudden the muse whoop, would sort of go into her body. She'd be like, I'm going to. Mona Lisa, and then she would knock it all out as it possessed her. Then after the muse releases her, she would keep some like the, the muse residue, like the, the ghost stuff of Ghostbusters, would stay inside of you. And as long as it stayed inside of you, you would keep having this ability. So Celia would continue to have this great painting ability. And so eventually the ghost residue would eventually sort of fade away. And then you have to pray to the gods again. And that's how they explained like needing inspiration. So the muses controlled all the artistic stuff that you did. So anytime you hear sound that was really pretty from someone singing or playing an instrument, it was not from them. It was sound that came from a muse. Literally, that's what music means. I see is Greek or Latin for sound. So it just means sound that came from a muse. The U-M means building in Greek and Latin. So it literally means a building of the muses. So a museum is not a thing that humans did. It's the thing the muses did. Music is not a thing that humans did. It's a thing that the muses did. So these nine muses sort of had to go through there and inspire you and control you like a little puppet. And that was how the muses would work, all nine of them. That happens. Some of you are going to pray to the muse of writing stuff down so angry teacher man doesn't have to come back and hit you in the hands later. Oh. Did you need a writing utensil? No, I'm just making sure. Mm -hmm. By the way, when you asked earlier how do your points disappear, it's stuff like that. When you make me have to remind you to do work, I charge you the points. All right. Yes, please. Yes, at the end of class. Don't forget. There we go, too. And June on the next one. Why Hera? It is correct. Hera, whose Roman name is Juno, J U N O. Hera, who's known as Mrs. Zeus, is the one right over here in pink. Is she wearing a peacock on her head? Yes, yes, she was. It was a style back then. Uh, over here, this is also Hera. Again, she has a peacock behind her. It's not necessarily on her head. And then again, this would be Hera, and that time the peacock is on her shoulder. Not every god had their own bird, but her, she actually is connected to the peacock. It's a story that we're going to get to. Ooh, uh, can so, does it say what she is the god of? So the three main things with Hera being Mrs. Zeus, she's the god of marriage, and she's also the god of childbirth. We're going to find out that two of those are incredibly ironic. One, she's the god of marriage. Ironic because what do we know about her marriage? 
Sure. Why did being married to Zeus a bad thing? True, and he was, well, he was very friendly. Yeah. And so the fact is, she was the god of marriage, but had the worst marriage in Greek mythology because her husband was super friendly with a whole bunch of other people, and there's a whole bunch of friend babies out there. And then two, she's the god of childbirth. And with her being the god of childbirth, again, it's going to qualify in that slightly ironic area because, one, she has four children. Her husband has hundreds of children. I mean, he didn't give birth. He was the father of hundreds. But if she only has four, how is that? Oh, no. <laughs> Friend babies is correct. So we're going to find out that a lot of the stories we get to with her is going to involve her killing babies. She spends a lot of her time killing babies. The reason being, she has four, her husband has hundreds, and she's trying to equal out the numbers as best as she can. And the best way to do that is to kill some babies. Uh, and so God of marriage, horrible marriage, God of babies, spends her time killing babies, apparently also God of irony and issues and stuff like that. The reason that June is connected to her, wait, is that when we kill babies? No, it's always baby killing time. You don't have to worry about that one. Uh, the, don't look surprised. So the reason being is it goes back to the whole marriage thing. And so her being one of the gods of marriage and weddings. If during this time period you wanted to get married, you did not want to do it in the winter time when weather was bad. So you would wait until it was nice out and it was summery out and you could have good weather for it and everything was pretty and the flowers were going. So usually when you got to that time of the year, it was said, good luck with your teeth thing. Maybe they don't pull them all out. Watch the, make sure you watch the video because you're going to want to see today's story because it's good stuff. Um, and so with the whole marriage thing, when you waited until summertime to get married, they started referring to this as the time of Juno or as the Juno time of year because everyone would get married in June. To this day, more people get married in the month of June than the other months combined. June is that popular of a time for weddings. So June, the month, is named after her because that's when people got married. More so than any other month was you would get married in June when the weather got nice. So June connects to Hera and the month of marriage. Oh. I couldn't hear you overcharging you more points for not writing stuff down. No, right. That's a weird flex. Wait, doesn't it rain a lot in April? It does. April showers bring me flowers. Next up, that's a weird conversation. We'll just roll that one. And where are we going to get mind from? They did not find it very fast last time. It took them a while. Athena. And why Athena? Because my that is correct. So we get mm, Athena is where we get the word mind because her Roman name is Minerva. She's also the goddess of, goddess of wisdom and intelligence and thinking. Uh, so not seventh graders uh, and stuff like that. Before we get to the reason why. Not of this guy. Go mine, or wasn't yes. that with? Oh no, I think I have a different god. Never mind. I think I have the two Go brothers. On. Gotcha. Um, we're gonna take our three minute break. Uh, for those of you at home, if you are needing to go tinkle or come back, realize I'll be doing video check when we return. Living children, here's where you get a chance to stand up. Sure. They're not. Hey, as we continue our story from there. So, oh, wait, hang on. I apologize. Good. All right. Back in, again for the third time. So now we have our story that's going to connect to Athena. So picture-wise, just so you guys are aware, this is Athena in the brown one up here. 
Uh, it's a bad picture because she looks like a midget and it looks like a giant horse, but she's not a midget and is not a giant horse. What you're looking at up there is the fact that I think it's supposed to be a, an artistic perspective where the horse is up close and she's far away and she's not pulling it down. I think she's supposed to be pulling it backwards, maybe. It's kind of yeah. hard to tell. And then she's also in the one that's over there uh, where she has, oh, there's Zachary. And this one where she's behind where Graham is, where that is Medusa that is on her shield and has an owl that is on her shoulder, which we'll get to here in just a moment. Henry, I'm getting ready to kick you out again. Uh, and then here we have Athena, and then she's holding an owl like it's a basketball, and she's throwing it into the air. And then that would be the owl that is on her shield that pops up again to there. Now you're alive, Henry. Thank you much. So with her, we get to go back to give you guys a little bit of the story that goes into this one. It's going to go back to Zeus when he was a young man and had recently married Hera and taken over control of the whole kingdom and gods and stuff like that. So Zeus is in his... 20s god wise married to hera king of all the gods and things are going well zeus decides to celebrate the fact that he is the new king of all the gods and that things are going his well by getting a girlfriend i mean he doesn't tell hera because he's not an idiot uh so he goes out and finds a girl by the name of metis m-e-t-i-s i've seen some stories that say it was a girl named mincenine but metis is usually the main one that picks up here and he goes and finds Metis. And he's like, hey, uh, I think you and I should go out. And she's like, but you're married. And he's like, well, we just won't tell anyone. And she's like, okay, good with me. And so he and Metis are friendly for a while. And things are going well. Hera has no idea about his friendship. Metis is good at keeping a secret. Until one day, Metis approaches him. And she's like, hey, uh, Zeus, you know how we've been friendly here for a few years now? And he's like, yeah, it's going wonderful. You're great. She's like, I have some good news for you. He's like, what's up? She goes, my good news is I'm pregnant. And he goes, I thought you said good news. And she goes, what? And he's like, <laughs> JK. Uh, and he realizes this is not good news for him because now there is physical evidence, proof of his friendship. And he can't have this proof getting out because he's pretty sure that uh, Hera is going to be a little on the grumpy side. So he has to come up with a plan to solve this problem. Now, his first solution is to just take a sword and stab Metis. Why is that not a good solution? Because it kills two people. No. It'll kill her. It, we say it will kill her? Uh, yeah. Because it's death. No. She'll know. Why would it not kill her? She's a god! You didn't know. You know, so I said god. she's a titan. And so with that, if he tries to stab Metis, it won't kill her. It'll just make her grumpy. If he just walks up, he's like, stabby, stabby, stabby. And she's like, why are you stabbing me? He's like, why aren't you dying? She's like, oh my God. He's like, ah, dang it. So you're like, that's not going to work. So his next goal is, I'll just wait till she has the baby, and then I can just stab the baby. But why does that not work? Because they're both titans, so the, God, so the baby's going to be a titan. So, yeah, so that does no good either. Because then you're just going to have a baby on a stick. And like, he's like spinning around. And the baby's like, wee. So he's like, so that doesn't solve the problem. So he has to come up with another way to get rid of this evidence that does not involve just stabbing and killing. Although, great way of problem solving for most people. Yeah. So Zeus is like, all right, I've got it. So he goes, all right, oh, that's so good. I'm glad you're pregnant. We should celebrate this good news. And she goes, I agree. She goes, well, what do you want to do? He goes, how about... How about we go for a picnic? And she's like, I love picnics. She goes, I do too. Let's go for a picnic in the woods, deep into the woods, deep, where, where no one is. And there'll be no one around us deep in the woods. And she's like, because it's like romantic? And he's like, yeah, romantic. That's what I'm going for. And she's like, you're such a romantic guy. And he's like, <laughs> romance, yeah. And so he goes ahead and packs up his little picnic basket and puts little things into it. Uh, packs like some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and some fruit snacks. And he's like, I great stuff. And fruit snacks, so they're delicious. Uh, and a banana. And he puts it all into his picnic basket. And he takes her, he's like, hey, uh, while hair is not paying attention, let's go for our picnic. And he leaves her deep, deep into this forest, in the woods where there's no one else around. And eventually he finds this clearing out there in the deep in this forest. It's like, 
well, there's no one around for miles. We've not seen the person for hours. And he was like, yeah, <laughs> how about that one? Well, let's have our picnic. And he unfolds the picnic and they both have some food, peanut butter and jelly and fruit snacks and they share the banana. He was like, she's like, this is great. At the end of the picnic, he goes, hey, I just had an idea. Why don't we also play a game? She's like, oh, I love games. He goes, I do too. She goes, well, what game do you want to play? He goes, I have an idea. It's called, who can turn into the smallest animal? Quick time out. Forgot to mention, in Greek mythology, they believed that the Titans could shape shift. They could turn into any animal or person they wanted to at any time. So if you were Aphrodite and you wanted to look like a raccoon, you could just whoop, turn into a raccoon. Or if you wanted to look like a lion, you could do it. So if you saw like a random squirrel hopping from tree to tree, for all you knew, that could be Demeter. She's like, I'm a squirrel, I'm a squirrel, I'm a squirrel, just running around having a good time. They just accepted that gods could shape shift and turn and stuff like that. Time back in. Uh, yeah. So what? Uh, so so if you, can you shape shift into like not not into an animal, animal like? Like if Katie wanted to look like Zeus and his, and his yeah. mm -hmm. because of society. Agreed. So at this point, he goes, all right, let's shapeshift who can become the smallest animal. She's like, I think that sounds like fun. He goes, all right, I'll go first to make it easy. He's like, <laughs> giraffe. And she's like, oh, that's simple. She's like, hippopotamus. And they keep going back and forth, getting smaller, like giggling, doing like the flirty, smacky thing. Flirty, smacky, flirty, smacky. As they keep going smaller and smaller, eventually they're like lion and then a hyena and they go down like a dog and then a cat and then a raccoon and then a squirrel and a chipmunk and a mouse. And eventually they get so small, they get down to insects. And it comes to Zeus who turns into a fly. He's like, zip, zip, and he flies around. He's like, I think I've won. I'm the smallest possible thing. I've turned into a fly. Metis thinks about it. She goes, no, I can beat you. So Zeus turns back into human form. He's like, all right, fine. How can you beat me? She goes, watch this. And she turns into a gnat with little tiny little black bugs like a speck. And she starts flying around his head. And she's like, me, 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 I've won. Me, 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 there's no way you can beat me. He's like, that's a good point. But did you think about this? And he grabs her out of the air and goes Hoop! and swallows her, throwing her into his mouth. The idea being is that he will trap her in his stomach. Now, for most of you who are any somewhat of intelligence, you're going to go, I have issues with this story. Over yes, I'm aware. Can't she turn back to normal size? Apparently not. Isn't she just going to get poo pooed out? Apparently not. Apparently she is stuck forever inside of his belly. And it's a perfect thing. He packs up the rest of the picnic basket, leaves the forest. No one ever sees Metis again. She's just gone. And when people ask about her, he's like, I don't know. You know how Metis is. She just went for a vacation. Maybe she's in Idaho. And just ignores it. And everyone accepts the fact that Metis is gone. Hera has no idea. Metis is never seen again in Greek mythology. Jermaine. Uh-huh. Uh, because they're imaginary. Right. And so and so he swallowed the whole nap thing because I answered all of those questions the first day. That's the paying attention thing. Don't make me sass a child. And so swallow the whole nap thing, shakes off his hands, everything is good. Years go by. No one has any idea about this. And he now is has Olympians, has the whole Mount Olympus, is the whole king god years and everything is great so one day he's walking through mount olympus and he starts getting the worst headache he's ever felt starts pounding on the front of his brain feels like someone punching him right in the brain bone and he's like ah and stumbling around starts knocking plants off of shelves and the guy's like what's wrong with you he's like i've got the worst headache i've ever had in my entire life like well you should do something about that and he was like someone bring me tylenol and they're like we haven't invented that yet. He's like, no, and flips over a desk and yells at people. And eventually one of the brave gods comes up to him and goes, hey, um, you should talk to your son, Hephaestus. He's like, why am I gonna talk to the crippled guy? I'm like, well, Hephaestus has invented a new way for solving headaches. It's a little experimental, but he's pretty sure it'll work. Just goes, all right, 
confessed us, huh? Experimental way of fixing headaches? I'm in. So he goes down to the mountain where Hephaestus currently has his forge and knocks on. He's like, Hephaestus is like, yeah, what's up? Zeus comes in and says, hey, um, rumor is you have a way of solving headaches. Hephaestus goes, yes, absolutely I do. But I've never really tried it, and it's kind of experimental. Zeus is like, I don't care. I'm willing to give it a try, whatever it might be. He's like, well, how does it work? Hephaestus goes, all right, hang on, let me go grab it for you. He walks into his little cave. Like, and pulls out a gigantic axe, big axe head on the end of it, and walks up to Zeus. He goes, here it is. Zeus goes, what do you call that? And Hephaestus goes, an axe. And Zeus goes, well, how does it work? And Hephaestus goes, well, here's what you do. So I'm going to take this chair. Zeus goes, uh-huh. He goes, I'm going to need you to come over behind the chair. And then lean your head over as far as you can Whoa. on the other side of it. And Zeus goes, uh-huh. And Festus goes, I'm going to back up all the way over to here with the axe. And then come running at you and then whack it into the top of your head as hard as I can. And Zeus goes, uh-huh. And he goes, once I've done that, I'm going to wiggle it back and forth, pull the axe out, and then reach my hand into the top of your skull Find out what's giving you a headache and pull it out. Zeus goes, this is how you're going to fix my headache. Nephesus goes, possibly. He goes, have you ever done it before? Nephesus is like, not yet, no, but I'm pretty sure it'll work. Zeus goes, all right, I'm in. He goes, perfect. So he goes, all right, he goes like, this chair over here? And that's like, yeah, you pick any chair. And he's like, all right, like, he's like, lean my head for you. He's like, yeah, just like that. Be he's like, all right. Be he's like, all right. We miss you, Jerry L. And so Hephaestus then backs up. He's like, all right, uh, hold on to the chair. He's like, this, this may hurt you more than me. Um, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's definitely going to hurt you more than me. And he runs in, he's like, ah, whack, and drops the axe into the top of Zeus's head, wiggles it back and forth as much as he can, whack, rips it out of the top. Zeus is like, oh, okay, what, what, what can you find? And the Festus goes over to him and rolls up his sleeves, plunges his hand into the top of Zeus's head, and starts reaching around and like squeezing different things, like squishy, squishy. Zeus is like, ah, ah. And he's like, that was the wrong. And then all of a sudden, Hephaestus starts screaming. He's like, ee! and then jumps back. And out of Zeus's head springs a small action figure. And then lands on the ground between them. It's of a girl in full battle armor with a shield and a sword and a spear. And it lands between them and then grows up into full size. Zeus and Hephaestus look at each other like, hmm? Huh? Brain baby! And they get all excited about the brain baby. Turns out this brain baby is Athena. And Zeus is like, how did you get in my head place? And she's like, well, my mother is Metis. And Zeus is like, who's Met? Oh. And he has that realization that, oh, I ate your mom. Uh, <laughs> we've all been there. And so he realized that apparently Metis gave birth inside of Zeus because she was pregnant. And then Athena, once born, traveled all throughout Zeus's system until she could find the most empty place to set up her house, his head. Uh, and so she went up to his head and then she created a forge while she was in his head. The same thing that Hephaestus has where you make weapons and armor. So she made her own weapons and armor using the metal that was in his head because that makes sense with the fire that was in his head also. because And so that's what gave him a headache was the fact that she was making her own armor and weapons inside of his brain. So because she's born from his brain, she becomes the god of wisdom. Because she was making her own armor and weapons, she becomes the god of fighting and war and weapons. What other did you use afterwards? Uh, mind is just your thinker thing. Zeus, being a god, he just has to shake his head back and forth, and it closes back up again. But whatever happened to Menace? Gone. We never see her again. She just disappeared in the whole Greek mythology thing. She just existed to give birth to a baby inside of Zeus's brain.
or somewhere inside of him from there. Uh, and most of that story, if you try to think about it, it's probably going to hurt your head. Our last word, <laughs> March, is going to come from, it's a guy we've already talked about. It is a month. It's connected to this thing. Mars. Why Mars? Because Mars sounds like Mars. What? And what is Mars's Greek name then? Um, his, his Greek name is Aries. Is correct. Yeah, Aries. Yeah, big one. yeah oh. I agree. Interesting. Yeah. And so we get March from Aries. Once again, War God. That is right over there. Again, War God. That's back over there above Kasope. And then war god that's over here with Ares. A couple things about him he was the god of war. There were two gods of war in Greek mythology strategic thinking war, and I don't care how I win, I'm going to kick you in the jimmy and then step on your head kind of war, depending on which kind of one you wanted to fight. For those of you who are Cobra Kai fans, Cobra Kai, Miyagido. And so, those are your two different ways of trying to look at it for making your connections on that one. Ares in Greek mythology was not a good person. He was attractive. He was considered one of the hotter of the gods, like in the top five hot gods category. He was like on the front cover of People magazine all the time. And now given, if you look at the poster, you're like, Mr. Boy, yeah, from that poster, he's not a hottie. Well, yes, that's just an artist drawing in front of the artist in that drawing as a hottie. But he was also a jerk and people did not like him. The other gods did not like him. Humans did not like him. There are stories of him taking on a human form, coming down to Earth, picking fights with other humans, getting beat up, and going back up to Mount Olympus and crying. And being like, they punched me in the nose, and it hurt my face, and now I'm all bleeding. And it's like, what is wrong with you? So he did not make a lot of friends at all because of his personality. But when you go off to war, it was said that you were doing the walk of Mars, which eventually just became marching because marching, not marching band. So don't think if you join marching band at the high school, you get to go kill people. And they're like, marching band, I'm going to go kill someone. I mean, you can, but they probably frown on it sometimes. But that's where marching originally came from is you did it when going off to war. The other one is the month, which also connects to this God. Much like in the summertime, people would get married. In, in March, people get into fights? Technically. The Greeks believed the gods got into fights this time of year. They thought this was the time of the year that Aries had the most control because you have more tornadoes, hurricanes, crazy weather, snowstorm. All of that happens during this time period. So the Greeks believed that Aries was in control of the world at this point, and then eventually his power would fade away, and then Juno would take over. Yeah. So why is it the zodiac sign Aries in March? Good question. On that one, that Aries is actually not this Aries. That one's A R I E S, and actually connects to a different thing. Even though you're like, but it's spelled the same. That one letter makes it a completely different part of Greek mythology. Solid question. You think it'd be a connection on that one, but no, it's connected to a different thing because, once again, Greek mythology and logic <laughs> yeah, don't always connect to each other on there. As sad as that may be. Hey. Nope, they still pronounced Aries. I know. Again, you're like, I think I. Nope, I'm back to being confused again. <laughs> Greek mythology. It's only going to get worse, but entertaining, but also worse from there. And then Wednesday, we get to fun, fun story on Wednesday. Uh, much more than just our one with Athena, we're going to get into actual big, big story. But the drawback is. Now we're done for today. We're going to go to the library. So home children, once I verify that you're a living person, um, then I can let you take off. Otherwise, I'm getting ready to count you as being absent. If I don't see you, for those of you who keep disappearing, uh, I have, uh, and look at that. A kid has now lost four points. How uh, many? Number three, so now you spent six. Still waiting? Yeah, not now. Have a seat. And then let's see. Hey, look at that. They're all alive. And then the, that is a new god. You would be correct. All right. So you guys are all alive. I approve. I'll see you guys on Wednesday.